Okay, let's open up with a word of prayer, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you pour out on us. We thank you for this wonderful day, for the sunshine, but most important, for your son, Jesus the Christ. Uh, Lord, do you just help and guide us and give us everything that we need. And we ask that you be with us, open our hearts and minds, that your word might be effective for our lives. In the most precious name of Jesus, amen. I'm kind of excited about uh, uh, this uh, doing Genesis with you because uh, the sermon today, um, Pastor Braun was preaching on St. Michael, the, the angel St. Michael, and uh, all angels. That's a festival Sunday, and that's what I'll be doing second service if you were not with us. And the book of Genesis really starts this all out. Okay, with the fall of Adam and Eve. And we're going to see that today. So it kind of is all comes full circle. I was preaching on Revelation, but it starts here in the book of Genesis. And I, he told me that you were at chapter 2 around verse 4. Is that correct? Is that good enough? Okay. So this is the creatum, creation of Adam and Eve. Okay. Now. Uh, we have, we have here, in in the in the uh, first couple of chapters, we have two stories of creation. Okay, and, and that's always confusing to people. They'll say, "Well, it, isn't there a contradiction?" No, it's written from two different points of view. Um, the first one is what we as Americans love to use on the first day of creation, on the second day of creation, on the third day of creation, because we like to have everything spelled out chronologically. That is a Western, which we are all Westerners, okay, meaning our area. That's the way we like to think chronologically. Eastern, which the Holy Land will be in, they did not think chronologically. They thought, what was the most important thing? Okay, so let's try an experiment. When you got up this morning, what was, what was the first thing you did? Took a shower. Okay. Put the dog out. Okay, got coffee. Was that the most important thing? Okay, now, see, see, each one of you had a different way of looking at that. Okay, what was most important? I, I would never answer that. Most important thing for me is... <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> Considering I spent half the night working on a sermon, so <laughs> just getting up was pretty good, yeah. And I was thinking, go in the bathroom. <laughs> now, that was really important. <laughs> so if I was telling the story, okay, that would be the first thing, okay? So sometimes they, they don't do it chronologically. They talk about what's important. So it kind of skips back and forth, and that confuses us sometimes. But it's the same story. Now, let me tell you, the, 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 the rabbis, the official teaching of the Jewish faith is that these two stories are two different creation stories. One was creation of Adam, the spiritual man, and the other one was Adam, the human man. Now, there's nothing in the scriptures that even suggests that, but you might hear that from somebody, and it's not correct. Just is not correct. Okay, so I'm looking at chapter 2, verse 4, correct? Okay, everybody with me? Oh, come on. Turn up the lights a little bit more. Everybody with me? Okay, good. That's just to wake me up. <laughs> this, uh, one, this is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. Okay, um, when the Lord God... Literally in the Hebrew, it says Yahweh. Now, Yahweh, this is interesting. Yahweh isn't actually proclaimed to the people of God until later on with Moses. But who's writing down the first five books of the... the Moses. So he knows the proper name of God. 
uh, you'll see throughout the rest of the time, they'll say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our fathers. Okay? But he's kind of picked up that term because remember at the burning bush, he says, when I go to the, the children of Israel and tell them, God, what should I call you? And he says, Yahweh. Now, important to understand, very important, that the Jewish people today will not even say Yahweh. They'll either say Elohim, which is our God with a small g, okay, the gods, or they'll, they'll just, they'll have the Y and then dot, 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 H. You'll see it sometimes written that way. Because they, the scriptures say not to misuse God's name. And they're so afraid of misusing his proper name that they don't even use it. Isn't that such a difference to what you hear on television where God's name is used in vain all the time? You know? Okay. Uh, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and no shrub of the field had yet appeared on the earth, literally land, and no plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth. And all there was, and, and there was no man to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. So this is the creation. It's, you know, the, God is talking about how each thing happened. There was this earth, but it didn't have anything. It was not fertile yet. And then there's water, and from that comes the whole earth. The Lord God formed the man. Now, the word formed is a, in Hebrew, is a form of the word potter. So you have this image of God as the potter. Okay? Have you ever seen somebody throw a pot on a wheel? It, you know, isn't that, I mean, they just take that lump of clay and they put their hands into it and they pull it up and form it into something beautiful. If you've ever seen that, it's, to me it's remarkable how that happens. And I think of that, this, this imagery, and I'm sure they're thinking of this, okay? That God is taking this lump of clay and forming it into a person. Carving it, making it just what he wants, okay? So he takes this from the earth. Formed the man from the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Now, in Hebrew, spirit, the word for spirit is ruach. The word for breath is ruach. The word for wind is ruach. The same exact word. So here, God is breathing into this person the breath, his spirit, into this human being, and he becomes a human being. Why is this different than the rest of creation? Only, man has a soul. Only mankind has that spirit. Yeah. I use spirit versus soul because soul came out of the Greek uh, philosophies, and is not, not a, 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 a we, we sometimes translate it that word, but more faithful to the scriptures, I think, is spirit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Would you mind giving a brief little thing on the difference between the spirit and the soul? Um, only just what I said. Soul was a concept from the Greek philosophers, that there was something inside of us that was called the soul. It wasn't, it wasn't part of the whole, it wasn't integrated, okay, like we talk about the spirit is in us. The spirit and soul are the same thing? No. I think a much better translation in the scriptures would be spirit versus soul. Well, but I, I, I'm just not being clear. I, are you saying that there is no soul? There's only spirit? No, I'm not saying that. Uh, I, I'm saying what what some people call the soul is really the spirit. Because soul it has, came from a different religious background, um, philosophy. So I'm just saying I think a, a better translation than soul is spirit. But people use soul, they mean spirit. But there's only one ethereal or whatever you want to call it, being. Yes. 
Yeah, I'm not, I'm not denying that. Just saying better translation. Yeah, Gary? Yeah, I have a different question. Yeah. Uh, in 5, where it starts out, no, now no shrub had yet appeared on earth, but back in Genesis 1, 11, God called vegetation into being on the ground. So it sounds like it was there at one place, and then here it says there's... No now, it's it's the progression. So he's he's kind of adding to to the story a little bit. So God, that the the point that I was trying to make with this whole thing is, all of uh, all the rest of creation, God spoke and it happened. Okay. So this is saying there there was the earth. It was void. Okay. There was nothing on it, and God called forth the waters. And then he called forth all the shrubs and the trees and everything. So God created everything from his word. Okay? Now, that's important to understand because it comes around when we get to, to the book of John. Okay? In the book of John, and we, we don't usually use this at Christmas time because John has a very different uh, nativity story. We like the shepherds and the sheep and the angels. But John says, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then a little later it says, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who is this Word? Jesus. So how did God create everything? Through Jesus, the Word, who now becomes flesh, okay, in this man, Jesus. So, let me okay? Yeah. yeah. Is, so what's happening here is his way of speaking of something, of coming back around to it again? Yeah, it's a, little, it's a little different way of telling the same story. Okay. And it adds some points to it. Uh, Gary, I wasn't going to use this illustration, but I will, because you're kind of pushing me. Uh, this, <laughs> this past week, we had a new members dinner, and uh, Pastor Braun... Uh, introduced me and I stood up and I was talking and I looked to my wife to get me some facts okay I, um, I said we've been here and I kind of paused and I looked at Benita and she said six years I said yeah six years and, and they they kind of joked about that but I watched all the other men and every one of them at one point turned to their wife to get some correction <laughs> okay <laughs> You know, so <laughs> I was thinking, I'm not alone in this, you know. Uh, so, you know, if you've ever told a story and your wife has kind of added in some of the facts, has that ever happened to any of you guys? No? I sure hope everybody who said no is coming to confession second service. <laughs> you know that happens, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So, we, you know, it, it's kind of, you, you each add a little bit to it. It's the same way if you, you're in a court of law. Each witness adds a little bit more to the story. They tell it from a different point of view. Maybe because they've seen it from a different point of view. Maybe someone was over here. Someone was over there. Yeah. No, 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 no. Je but Jesus pre-existed. He wasn't born a man yet. But he existed at creation. And it says, we were creating. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were there at the creation. But he was a spiritual being, not a human being. Okay? It, does that make sense? Okay? It's all coming around. Okay? We're gonna, if I can get to, to it. <laughs> okay. Um, what verse was I on? Eight. Why does the print get smaller as you get older? Okay. <laughs> now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. Eden um, in Hebrew means paradise. Uh, it, it, also, it could also mean a plain, a flat area. Okay. So we don't know where they got the term. And there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. 
Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And again here, you look at this and say, wait a minute. He says he created man, put him in, and then created tree. Now, he's telling it in a different way. Okay? Don't, don't try to put time onto this. Okay? The, the first one tells us the days. This is kind of telling a narrative, a story. Okay? A river watering the garden from Eden. From there, it's separated into four headwaters. Now, man, kind, was created for eternity. There was no death, no pain, no problems. Okay? And he's placed in this garden, the paradise. The name of the first is the Pishon. Now, uh, I'd like someone to get out uh, one of the atlases and point to Pishon. You can't. We don't know where it is. We don't know where this garden was. We think maybe they were talking about the Euphrates, but remember there's a flood after this that destroyed everything. It could be totally different. So these people you hear about, and I hear about them all the time, go off the deep end. Well, we know where the Garden of Eden was. Well, we don't. We just don't. We think they were talking about somewhere in what we would call modern-day Iraq. Okay? But we don't know. The name of the first is Pishon. It winds through the entire land of Havilah. Same thing. We don't know where this land is. Okay? They did at the time of Moses. We don't. Where there is gold, the gold of that land is good. Aromatic resin and onyx are also there. So it's a land filled with rich things. It is a paradise. The name of the second river is Gahan. It winds through the entire land of Cush. Now Cush, there was an area that we knew about in those days. The name of the third river is the Tigris. Now there is a Tigris River. We don't know if he was referring to that or it's changed. You know, rivers do change. Um, it runs along the east side of Asher. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. Okay, now, the Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Okay, so remember when this comes. When does it come? Before the fall. And God puts mankind into the garden to work. So work is not a four-letter word. And work isn't part of imperfection. Okay? We, we have a work in eternity. Okay? Work is good. All right. I want you to see that. We're, that's going to change here at the fall. All right. All right. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. Okay. How many commands did God give Adam and Eve? One command. Just one command. And they couldn't keep it. What? What? Yeah, that's a good... Why? Yeah, because God also gave mankind free will. That we could choose what we wanted to do. You know? And, and we chose. They chose. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question, Jordan. Um, he was... I would say it this way. He was created for eternal life. He ate of the tree of life to continue to receive that gift. Okay? Because, and the reason I say that is because in the book of Revelations, it talks about the tree of life and us eating it into eternity. So that's a very good question. I don't have a good answer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, the tree, well, there was other trees too. The tree of knowledge and the tree of good and evil. Yeah, yeah. Right, yes, two different trees. 
To totally different. That's right. And he says, that tree you can eat of, any of the other trees you can eat of, not the tree of uh, good and knowledge. Uh, uh, knowledge, of good and evil. No knowledge of good and evil. Yeah, okay. Now, oftentimes, you'll see this with an apple, okay? We don't know if it was an apple or not. There, there's some stories that go behind it of why they came up with an apple, okay? Now, one of the things that you should know is that at the time of Martin Luther, that there was a feast of Adam and Eve. And the feast of Adam and Eve was Christmas Eve, okay? So what they would do is they would take a barren tree, sometimes an evergreen tree, and they would place it in the church and place apples on it, okay? Because they, they thought that was the fruit, the forbidden fruit, okay? Now, many times people will say Martin Luther was the, uh, um, the originator of the Christmas tree. Probably not true, okay? They did have a tree in the church, but it was for a different reason totally than what we have Christmas trees, Okay, it was for this feast day of Adam and Eve. Yeah, John? Have you ever stopped to think what would have happened if Adam would refuse to eat the apple tree already? Yeah, yeah. You, you, you mean after Eve ate and Adam didn't, what would have happened? <clears throat> Something to think about. <laughs> um, I don't think you want to hear my answer. <laughs> Men would be perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We don't know. I don't know. You can guess all you want, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, am I 18? Okay, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone, okay? So, you know, we're kind of taking these stories and kind of putting them together. So we know that God brings all the animals to Adam, and he names all of them. That was really to say he had dominion over them. He had power over them, okay? Oh, wow, I just remembered something that I totally left out of my sermon, first service. Um... Yeah. No, it's never too late, Charlie. I got you here. I, I really wanted to share this with you. Um, the scriptures, when, when we're talking about, uh, uh, all the first service people will say, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. Second service, it'll come to you later. When we're talking about Satan, it says, um, it, in the New Testament, it says, Satan is like a roaring lion seeking his prey. Okay? Um, I came across a, 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 a very interesting illustration that said that lions, when they're hunting, do not roar. How many of you had a cat in your house? You ever see the way they, they hunt? They don't say, they kind of creep up on you and then jump on you with their claws out. They're nasty little things. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? Do we have any cat people? Yeah. I have a dog that would like to eat them. <laughs> Can we take this out of the tape? <laughs> Don't tell Pastor Braun. <laughs> okay. So a lion is like that. They're not, they're not going to roar. When do the lions roar? After they catch the prey. And why do they roar? Because the hyenas all come around the lions to get the leftovers. But listen to this. Okay, so the, they, they roar, okay, to keep the hyenas away. Hyenas have a, a, a much stronger jaw strength than what a lion does. And if a hyena wanted to, a hyena could kill a lion. Why does he stay away? He's afraid because of the roar. Okay, so Satan goes around looking for us, roaring, but we can, we can, we take that seriously, but at the same time we can say, wait a minute, he's been defeated in Christ Jesus. We don't have to be afraid. 
Isn't that a wonderful thing? Okay. Sorry about that. Maybe I'll put it in second service. Maybe I won't. I'll just say, oh, you missed it. Tough luck. Okay. Uh, so, so Adam has dominion over all the animals. And, and he doesn't find somebody who is suitable for him, a mate suitable for him. I like the way it, it says, a help mate. I, this, this translation that I'm reading just says, helper. I think helpmate is wonderful. And that's, that's what marriage is all about, us helping one another, turning to your wife and saying, when did that happen? You know? Yeah. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And, and you notice what I just did? I did a very Hebrew thing. I, I put that before it, it's supposed to come. Got it out of order, okay? And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. This is just to say he has dominion over all them. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds of the air, and the, and the beasts of the field. But for Adam, no suitable helper, no helpmate suitable for him was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Now, another translation, because this rib thing is very unclear in Hebrew, is he took a part of his side. Okay? When I was growing up, believe it or not, um, I remember hearing this teaching that men have one less rib than women do. That's not correct. Okay? <laughs> Okay. So this is an illustration that God is taking part of Adam. Okay. What does Adam mean? Ground, earth, dust, dirt. You know. Um, for, for a long time, the church said no to cremation. Because the way cremation started was two things some false religions, and also in defiance of the resurrection. Some people would say, yeah, put me together. I'm going to get burned up so there's nothing left of me, you know. So the church w was opposed to that. Today, very clearly, our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, is not opposed to that because that's not part of the culture anymore, okay? Uh, bear there's nothing in, in the scriptures that say this is the way you need to be buried, I, I was always thinking about burial. My wife wanted cremation. And what changed my mind was I went one time to a burial. And nowadays they put you into a crypt. And when that crypt seals, you are in suspended animation. You do not, it is not dust to dust and ashes to ashes. And I want to go back to, to what God created me out of. So that's why we're doing cremation. So it is not wrong to do it. You can, it's, it might not be right for you. I'm not saying this is what you have to do. Not at all. But it's not wrong. Because people ask me that all the time. Okay. Uh, yeah, well. <laughs> now I know why I teach in the other classroom. I forgot what he was like. I, I miss him. Yeah. yeah. Johnny, let me tell you something. She's going to make the decision. <laughs> yeah, cause you, cause we both know I'm going and, for and you won't have you won't have any choice in it and you won't know <laughs> so when Donna comes to me and say can I cremate John I'm going to say oh yes because <laughs> I warned him <laughs> I remember. <laughs> that also means you're going before me. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, I know that was off the subject, but people ask me that all the time, and I think it's important to hear that. Okay. Uh, verse um, 19. Um, no. 21. 21. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep, and he took out of the man, and he brought her to the, to the man. The, uh, the man said, this is now bone of my bones and woman of, and flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman. So in Hebrew, woman and man sound alike. 
Okay, they sound like words. For she was taken out of man. Okay, so we're, God created mankind and then he created womankind. Okay, for this reason, this is often used at weddings. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united. This is the first marriage, okay, to his wife and they will become one flesh. The man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Now this nakedness, don't get hung up on that, okay? It meant there was nothing separating them from God. Nothing whatsoever, okay? And, and this nakedness, they, oh, I'm sorry uh, for all the Texans, naked. <laughs> I forgot where I was for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. They, 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 they didn't have clothing. They weren't separated from God. They didn't know shame. They didn't know any of that. Yeah, I saw Jordan and then yeah, Gary. Back to the verse 21, uh, yeah. About the prison time and yeah. I, there was a story earlier this year in a different church I've heard where they're comparing Jesus, uh, getting stoned and Jesus getting stabbed as a crucifixion. Yeah. And they're comparing the crucifixion to the Passover. Yeah. And they're comparing the Passover to the Passover. 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 Um, okay, yeah, let me repeat it. He was saying that the, the taking of the rib from the side and creating woman and Jesus being pierced by the spear, you know, had some sort of correlation. I, I can't see anything scriptural about that. Might be a nice illustration. It might be a nice story. I don't see it scripturally. So believe it if you want to. Don't believe it if you don't want to. Okay, I, I just, um, I've heard that too, Jordan. I, I just... I just don't see that. Um, I see a different illustration in that. And, you know, everybody has to come to the scriptures, you know. And I see that as piercing his heart. He, he died from a broken heart. Yeah. Is there any place where you can talk about how much time has elapsed? Oh, ex excellent, excellent question. And I had it in my... In my sides of my notes, I was going to talk about that. Yeah, how much time was Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden? I can give you a, a very distinct answer. I have absolutely no idea. <laughs> yeah. I always felt that way until last Sunday in Bible class. And then I felt like because in chapter 1, he says God created man in his own image, male and female, he created them. And, and then it says, and after all these things were made, and it yeah. was very good, and that was the end of the sixth day. Yeah. So he, according to chapter one, he had created male and female men by the end of the sixth day, and yeah. that was completed. Yes. So Adam had a very busy first day if he had to name all those animals. And yeah. A, a, a man was, you know, and And it was, a, it was a man doing it. Yeah. yeah. Well, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We We How long was it before he created woman? Right. Then it says right here he created male and female. He created them. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, Yeah. But then on the seventh day, okay, he rested. How long did Adam and Eve stay in the garden of Eden? That was the question. Right? Yeah. No, how long were they in the Garden of Eden? We have no idea. Now, I've had, I had um, a discussion with the fellow pastor. He said it was within a month. And, and his reasoning was that, that they, they were told to be fruitful and multiply, and there is no children, so it had to be less than a month. I, I don't, come on. It, it could have, we, we don't know. We just don't know. And, you know, sometimes we get hung up on those things. You know what? Yeah, just wait until you get to eternity and ask Jesus, you know. I'll, yeah, but make it before I do because I got a lot more than you do. Okay, so, okay. Um, yes? Do you, do you think that we will be able to either ask questions like that or just know it or something when we get up there? 
the question was, do you think we'll be able to sit down and ask those questions, or do you think we'll just know the questions? I'll let you know. <laughs> just as soon as we meet up, I'll say, Bill, I got the answer. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a lot of things we don't know, but God, God doesn't tell us everything we need to know, okay? okay let, let me give you a, a little example, you know? In, in the Old Testament, God gave the Old Testament people dietary laws. Don't eat this, eat this. When we look at, uh, he gave them a formula for soap. Do you all realize that? What they used to wash up was actually a formula given by God. It was a disinfectant soap. Okay? Just, I'll get to you. And, um, and they knew nothing about germs or anything like that. Okay? So if God said, listen, I'm giving you these dietary laws because there's germs running around, <laughs> what would they say? Yeah. 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 So, you know, and I, I'm sure it's with us too. We there is, some of this is beyond our comprehension at this point. And that's when I read the book of Revelations and, and St. John keeps saying, it's like, it's like, it's like. Go, go through some time and, and just do a Bible. If you go to BibleGateway.com and put in like for the book of Revelation, it will give you all the examples in the book of Revelation like. Because it was so beyond what he could even explain or understand that he had to use an example of what we have. Yeah, let me, yeah. Sure. I have a question. How does this image compare to the New Jerusalem that's spoken of in Revelation? I kind of look at it like we were derailed from this world and are we headed somewhere else or are we headed kind of back to what it was originally? We're, you know, we're talking about two different, um, we're talking about eternity and time and all of the differences, earth and heaven, you know. We don't know all of that, but this is going to go full circle in the sense that we know that in this, this paradise, eternity, that we will have recreated bodies, okay, uh, and that we will be living forever. The tree of life will be there. The river will be there. So it, we're, Adam and Eve lost that image of God. And Christ is returning that image to us fully in our death. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, John? Yeah, but does that mean you have to sit down and ask the questions? Is it a growing thing? I, I don't know, John. Yeah. It will be revealed. All things will be revealed to us. How they will be revealed, I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, uh, Charlotte said, are we even going to care? I, you know, I think at that point, all those things will be kind of not an issue, yeah, because we'll be we'll we'll be in that uh, that peace, that comfort, the the pure love. We, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, all right. Now the spirit. I'm, I'm uh, chapter three. Are you with me? Okay, because I wanted to get to this because this is really talking about what I talked about in my sermon. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. So this image of Satan, the devil, and I, I explained to you why we get the word Satan and devil in first service, but this image of the devil or the dragon uh, goes throughout the whole scriptures, even to the book of Revelations, okay? He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? What is he trying to do? He's trying to put some doubt in their mind. Yeah. Is that what you said, Terry? Yeah. Trying to put some doubt in. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say, you must not eat from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And look at this. She adds something to it. You must not touch it or you will die. Now they ate of the tree. Did they die? 
Yeah. But not immediate, not immediate physical death. That's going to come later. So is Adam lying? Uh, uh, Adam. Is Satan lying? Uh, he's, he's telling a half truth at the very best. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he's a liar. Deceiver. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman. No. There are going to be other consequences. You'll die spiritually. Eventually die physically. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. You know what the root of this whole thing is? The root of the whole thing is we don't want to listen to God. We want to be our own God. And we want to make our own decisions. And if you were in first service, you heard me say that the devil was an angel who wanted to be like God. So he's saying to Adam and Eve, hey, don't you doubt this a little bit? Don't you want to be just like God? You know, you can make up your own rules. Yeah. That is such a strong temptation. We, uh, you know, we're told to be, to, to strive to be like Christ, to be godly. But that, that's done, I mean. Being godly is not being God. Yeah. Oh, I can understand it. to be like God. And if there's some way that you could be more like God by eating a piece of fruit. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the issue is it's disobedience. It's disobedience. Yes. Yes. But anytime we allow something to get in the place of God, we have created a new God ourselves. Because we have decided what's better. Yeah. It, yeah. Before, it was God telling Adam not to eat of it. Yeah. God never, direct, at least in the scripture, never directly tells Eve. No, it, Adam told Eve. So he's the one who got it wrong about the rest of it. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> or may, maybe at the first time, we just didn't, they didn't put it down. That was all part of the first command. They just didn't write it down, and now they're adding a little something. You know, as you tell a story, you kind of add and add and add. When you look at the New Testament, and we look at the Gospels, okay, some of the Gospels, I, when I mean the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, okay? But the first three Gospels, sometimes the stories are word for word the same. Sometimes there's additions to it. You know, and I can just see how one of the disciples, let's say Mark, which I believe was the first gospel, sat down and wrote the story, and then Matthew read it and said, "Oh, wait a minute, uh, he didn't. He didn't add. He didn't say this." And then he writes his gospel and he adds the rest of the story. So that could be also, okay. But you're right. I, I wasn't going to say that, but it was Adam's fault. That <laughs> yeah. Well, didn't she catch a hint? But the snake was the only animal in the whole place that could talk. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that's a little bit odd? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What? Oh, you think it is? Yeah, okay. Uh, if, I, if I understand what you're trying to say, let me repeat this. That um, how does free will play into this whole thing? Because it could have been an error. An error is, uh, an error is something that you do uh, that is not in violation to God's law. This was God's law. God said, don't do this. And when they did it, it was an act of disobedience. But they have... The, they had the right to either follow God's will or not. God does not make us puppets. God doesn't pull our strings and, and, and make us do what we have to do. We have a choice, even today. And we can choose to do good or we can choose to do evil. Okay? All right. Verse, it was, it, was it something I said? Everybody's leaving me. Yeah. Oh, I'm almost done with my time. Yeah, Arlene. Why do you suppose the serpent went to the woman first and then Adam and 
I'll let you know. <laughs> but I, I'm, I, I'm kind of... I'm kind of joking about that, but I have heard sermons, and I'm going to tell you, it just bugs the heck out of me, that, that the woman was more gullible than the man was. <laughs> There's nothing scriptural that says that whatsoever. Okay? Yeah. I, there's nothing. We, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Satan, uh, Satan is pretty crafty, Okay? And, and we don't know everything that went on. How do we know that he didn't tempt Adam at one point and Adam said no? And, and he, maybe he tempted Eve before and she said no. And this was a progression over and over again. You know, we, we can see that in the life of Jesus. Uh, when Jesus starts his ministry, he's 40 days in the desert. And Satan tempts him, you know, the three times. And then the ending which a lot of times we don't look at. It's so important. It says, and the devil left him for a more opportune time. And there's times in our life when I think we're more easily tempted than other times. And sometimes we can resist the temptation better than what we can at other times. So maybe this was just a time that Satan could get in there and tempt. And I think it's a constant thing because I, I think throughout Jesus' life he was always being tempted. And we see that coming about even in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, he's there tempting him. Don't, don't do this. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. I listened to it a little more than if you told me or... Yeah. Told me or. Yeah. There was no other beings to tell Adam, though, at that point. Yeah. I, I, what I thought of, okay, and, and this is kind of pushing the scriptures a little bit, but we have a command to tell others about God's commands. And even if God gave the command just to Adam, let's say that's a fact, which I don't know if it is or not. But if he never told Eve directly, Adam had the responsibility to tell Eve what God had told him. But, yeah. But God, Adam and Eve were yeah. Yeah, she knew God. She knew every, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she was part of Adam. Yeah, yeah. That's why I said, Michelle, that's why I said I'm stretching a little bit with, but you know, that is, it is our responsibility to share God's law with others. Yeah, she knew it. Yeah, where she got it from, it doesn't matter. She knew it. And she knew that God had said it. This is what God said. No, I, I, I don't think she understood that. But I don't know. I'll let you know. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, he took some and ate it. She took some. She also gave some to her husband who was with her. So he's there at the temptation. And he ate it. He knew too. Come on. I, it, there's no sense in pointing fingers at one or the other. They're going to do enough of that. Okay? Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Now, I'm not going to get to it. I'm at the end of my time, and since I'm preaching, I really do need to, to leave. But I want you to skip to the end of the chapter, chapter, verse 24, because this fits into my sermon for today, because people will talk about cherubs and think of them as little chubby, um, little fat babies, chubby babies with a diaper on, okay? Let's see what they really are, Okay? After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim 
Now, cherubim are winged creatures. Uh, they are a form of angels, but not an angel. There is an angel also. Okay, so there's different beings. Cherubim is the plural for cherubs. So let's see this cute little baby. Okay? And a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Why would God do that? Isn't that mean? Right. Go back to verse 22. And the Lord God said, The man has now become like one of us, knowing good and evil. He must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. We would have lived forever in a sinful state, which would have been horrible. God, God had a different plan. Okay? Okay. I hope that you got something out of that today. I did a lot of I don't knows. <laughs> but we don't know. And that's okay. You know, so, some people are afraid to share about their faith because I know it's time. Thank you. Everybody's. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were pointing to the clock. That too. Yeah, you know, I, um, Susan and I have heard that. And um, some people make a big deal out of this that they used fig leaves. And what happens to a fig leaf? It dies. So it, it, it yeah, dries up and dies. So every day you got to get a new fig leaf. Okay, but what does God do? God slaughters an animal and makes a, a, a clothing out of skin, which is uh, longer lasting. And I've heard pastors kind of say, you know, th they tried to solve the, the, the situation and it was only a temporary fix and God was going to give them a permanent fix. And this kind of points to the sacrificial system because God had to kill an animal. So there had to be blood in order to cover up their sins. I think that's pushing it a little bit. I, I don't think it's out of the question, but I don't see that scripturally. Yeah, okay. Okay, very good. Let's close with a word of prayer and then I'm going to run. So I'm sorry, I can't answer any more questions. Because i got to preach. Okay. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful word. We, we know that we don't know all the answers. And oftentimes we have a lot of questions. But we do know the important things. We know that you are the creator. That you created this wonderful world. The paradise for Adam and Eve. And when they disobeyed, they lost that. And they had to leave. But you had a better way. And throughout the scriptures, we see that. How you sent Jesus to take away all of those sins. To take away everything that separates us from you. So that we could have an eternal relationship with you. And this day, we thank and praise you for that. We thank and praise you that you are a God of recreation that you are a God who forgives and loves and helps us each and every day. We ask that you be with us. Help us to resist those temptations and help us to follow your word, your commands, each and every day. In the most precious name of Jesus, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a very blessed week.